everybody. Uh, I feel terrible about having such a long hiatus lately. Well, with uh, well, with the Christmas season coming around and New Year's, like um, <sighs> yo, there's nothing I can really say except for that I'm sorry it took me this long to upload a video to um, even interact with you guys. Basically, explain where I've been, what I've been doing. So the long and short of it is, I haven't really had too much time to make uh videos lately. I work retail. Basically, I work a full-time job outside of YouTube pretty much 40 hours a week, so that kind of occupies my time for the moment in order to pay the bills and any other household needs I might need in real life. I'm actually planning on touching upon all this in a channel status update video that I'm working on concurrently with this. I promise I'll touch base with you guys on everything uh, probably later this week, but for the moment, I'm sitting down, I'm excited to dip my toes into a genre that I've not really touched on the channel. Uh, it's an anime from uh, the early to mid 2000s. It's an anime that uh, my buddy X, who's a big super fan of this, recommended to me called The Melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya. Now my history with this series is a little bit limited. I watched the, the movie that came with this series long before I even knew that uh, it was an actual show before it was a movie, but this was like 10, 10, maybe 10 years ago. I think it came out in either 2009, 2012. I don't remember. I, I think I remember watching it in 2012 and like that was a long time ago. So God forbid I actually remember what happened in the movie, what happened with the characters, how it related to the actual series that it belonged to. But I do kind of remember enjoying it, I guess. I mean, it was uh, it was animated by Kyoto Animation, so I've already got a soft spot for it already because I love that animation company already for uh, Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid and uh, other stuff they've done. And the reason it was recommended to me is because uh, I'm into kind of the sci-fi genre, kind of uh, overarching story type of series, and uh, my buddy said this was perfect for me, so I'm gonna I'm gonna check it out. We're starting with the very first episode that was released um, from Kyoto called The Adventures of Mikuru Asahina. I hope I'm saying that right. Episode double zero. I don't know what that means. X, my friend of this, who who's more associated with this series, basically said that this is kind of um, the pilot episode that basically uh, sets the tone for what I'm going to be expecting. Throughout the series going forward, it's basically something that'll uh, introduce me to the characters kind of early on. But yeah, let's get into this. I've got the episode all booted up. And let's dive right in. And if you guys have any requests for any other pieces of animation or anime in general that you'd like me to watch if I haven't already seen it yet, uh, feel free to just comment and uh, just tell me about it. But we're going to kick things off in 3, 2, 1 start. <laughs> Why does this look like something that would have been filmed in like high school in the 90s? This looks like a, a film project, a student film project. I'm sure the animation probably doesn't look uh, this kind of rough. I'm sure it's going to get more polished as it goes on, but it's probably just... Um, getting this kind of choppy, grainy effect just for the purpose of making it look like a high school play. I'm assuming that's what this is supposed to be. Chore boy! <laughs> they don't call that assistant director or something? SOS Brigade. I'm watching this in English, by the way. The English dub, whatever. I prefer my anime in English just so... It's a more seamless transition for you guys to react along with me. I'd have to put subtitles. Is otherwise. Asahina. On the outside, she seems like a normal, kind, and extremely cute girl. But in reality, she's a battle waitress from the future. What? Don't ask me why she's from the future or why she's a waitress, because that's not important right now. It's just a couple of minor details you need to have shoved down your throat before this particular story can kick in. Well, this guy isn't holding back, is he? <laughs> By the way, earlier I mentioned she was a battle waitress. Right. So you're probably wondering why she's wearing a bunny girl. Costume. Yeah, why is 
You see, that's because during the day she has a part-time job attracting customers to this store in the local shop. But she has to wear that? I can't believe it. Look, the Napa cabbage is cheap today. Yes, we should hurry up and buy some. What kind of acting is that? Hi, Mikuru. Looks like you're working hard out here today. Yes, I'm trying my best. Mikuru answers cheerfully in an outfit that screams trying too hard. And so, thanks to her innocent charms, the Napa cabbage sold out in Why are they just staring at each other? Work so hard. Oh my god. Why are you? Well, I guess that outfit doesn't really have pockets or anything, so she kind of has to. Why not carry a purse or something? The girl had become a sort of really? For the local retailers. X, what have you gotten me into, Pen? Who lived in the neighborhood. You can do it, Mikuru. Bring back the customers who flock like lemmings to that huge mega warehouse store that opened last year. Does she have to start over and run back? Why? Riding on your shoulders, Mikuru. You can see her getting. Unfortunately. <laughs> None of this has anything to do with the story. Yeah, what does this have to do with the story? I don't even know what the story is. She's an... She's anyway, a... Getting back to the story, she's actually a battle waitress. Yeah. She was sent back in time to secretly watch over someone and make sure no harm came to them. This is the protagonist. And that someone's name is Itsuki Koizumi. Koizumi. Looking at him, you'd think he was your average carefree high school student. Yeah. In reality, he's an esper. Unfortunately, he's not aware of his powers yet. What's an Esper? It seems he needs a catalyst or trigger to awaken all of the super incredible powers lying dormant within him. She looks like she's got a high school crush on a boy who she can't express her true feelings to. But we'll just say that was a little sigh of relief because she saw Itsuki was safe. Oh. Safe from what? Mikuru finishes her other part-time job, which also requires her to be scantily clad, and goes home to her tiny room at the back of the stationery store. Ah, uh, so she has to live kind of trash. Jesus, uh. this really does look like something from 2006. Done for the day, Mikuru can finally take off that sleazy outfit, change into something comfier, and settle down for a good. Whoa, whoa! <laughs> We'll you see it glitched in and out. That's funny. So don't bother asking us for the footage, because we don't have it. Honest. I'm sure. It, I'm sure you don't. I love how it's how the camera's focusing. Ooh, who's this? Although we don't really know why. You could say she's not an ordinary girl, and maybe she's a little weird. Well, you're right, because she's actually an evil witch. I remember her from the movie, but I don't think she was wearing this kind of witch getup. Yuki's planning something diabolical that involves Itsuki. But there's no reason for her to be hanging out at the high school after he's gone home. I don't know. Also, the lighting's changed. It was early evening in the last scene, but now it's obviously the middle okay, of the Okay, don't point out the technical you stuff. You're supposed to be the narrator. That scenes like this makes it really hard for the editor. <laughs> Moving right along. We've got the first battle scene between Mikuru and Yuki. All the stuff about them meeting for the first time and the reason why they're fighting. I guess that's all going to be left up to the viewer's imagination for various reasons, which shall remain unexplained. Sure. In fact, with the way this has been going, we'll be lucky if this movie makes any sense at all. <laughs> it already doesn't make sense. Whoa! What? Who brought a? Even if they're fake, who brings Hello, guns to a magic fight? The, uh, staff with the creative design. It's called the Starring Inferno, and it's supposed to be a magic wand. Okay. It's time to use my secret weapon. Mikuru <laughs> Bean. Huh? Let me explain. The Mikuru Bean is a super dangerous laser beam. She just that shoots out of. Was that supposed to be light from her eye or something? I'm literally. So now they advertise together? It feels like the story's kind of jumping all over the place. Is it supposed to be intended like that? <laughs> oh, 
other heroes can transform into Are you going to cut but this too? To change her clothes. Okay. You see, she's off to work again today and mustn't be late. Meanwhile, Itsuki was walking along, staring blankly at the world as he always does. Now she has a cat. Uh, and who might you be? Nice delivery. I am an alien from beyond the stars that uses the art of magic. Well, is that so? It is. And what do you want with me? He does not look like he wants to be there. Come from outer space with None of them do. Goal, to take your hidden powers from you. What would you do if I said you were being a nuisance? I am prepared to use force if I have to, to take your hidden powers away from Oh, me. shit. Just how would you use force to obtain my powers? Like this. <laughs> <laughs> you have won today's round, Battle Waitress. And I promise you won't be so lucky next What did she even- Please make your funeral arrangements for when next we meet it will be the last. What? Next time you may be certain that I will intend to take you down and destroy you with no mercy. I feel like the joke is that her quiet delivery is supposed to be comedic. And who might you be? Oh my god. Now you're following her? Just who in the world is she? Who is she? With a forced look of awe on his face, Itsuki watches... They were trying to pan up, but the they might have had the tripod too tight or something. Once again, a huge chunk of the story has been left yeah. out. After this and that involving you-know-what, uh, the flames of battle have burst up again, I think. I, The narrator doesn't even know. He has the toughest job of all. I thought she was a witch, not a alien. You, you can see him holding up the the reflector. Not I, for we shall seize him and his hidden powers. For he is very Yeah, zoom in so you so you don't see him. While we're seizing him and his hidden powers. We will also invade the earth. I won't let you get away with Focus, me. man. Come on. I my to stop you. Prepare yourself then, for I am about to take your life. Where did they come from? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> What are they doing? <laughs> I can't take you seriously when you're dressed like You're that. breaking character. I'm sorry, Mikuru. I'm being controlled by the alien right now. Here goes nothing. Here goes nothing. Uh, some kind of electromagnetic waves coming out of the so-called starring inferno wand has turned Surya and the guys into a trio of mindless puppets. Okay. Now she's trapped. What are you going to do, Mikuru? Uh, she couldn't do anything. Was that supposed to happen? Just grab my hand. It's okay. Okay, Itsuki just showed up, but where's he been? Yeah, exactly. I think they accidentally got him in the shot a few moments they ago. They did. But this boy decides to carry this unconscious, innocent young beauty. And what happened to the mindless drones? Are they just letting them get away? Anyway. Yuki's gang seems to have bailed without finishing exactly which they totally could have done with so many mysteries contradictions and plot threads left dangling we tilt up again as the story finally reaches the halfway point hold on we're only halfway through this thing oh shit we are <laughs> we're back and I like it but like I'm wondering why the story is so cluttered looks like she's just gotten out of the bath Maybe we're supposed to think that she was given a bath by Itsuki while she was unconscious? Oh. You gotta be kidding me! Then this would be the point where anyone's doubt turns into a white hot And is the entire series gonna be shot like this kind of but film now, student not give it much um, thought, angle? Doing away with all of the emotions that might be bubbling up. We are, after all, just watching a movie with actors playing characters. This isn't reality, right? What are you doing, dude? Okay, how is this happening right now? If your mouth gets any closer to her, someone standing off camera is gonna step into frame and kick your ass, damn it! Hold it right there. Got a crush on her or something, narrator? What is your deal? Itsuki Koizumi, you should not be making the choice of that female. You must choose me instead, for the true potential of your hidden powers will only be realized when they mingle with my powers. 
Please explain exactly what you mean by that. Okay, why isn't he at least a little surprised to see Yuki at the window? Because his delivery is just so monotone. You have two choices before you right now. But what Nagato, I mean Yuki, what she said just now, she was talking about him. So her name's Nagato? Very well. I understand that he... No, in this scene it's me, so I... I am a kind of God. key, and a key all by itself does not have any power whatsoever. And I've made a lot of films, film projects for classes in, in my day, way. and they've never turned out like this. Change, and I know that what will change is... Are you gonna cut? That's about all I understand, Yuki. But right now, I don't have the right to make that decision. In fact, I think it's far too early for me to come up with a decision. Okay. Maybe we should put all of this deciding stuff on hold for a while. I thought of that. You could say they're setting up a plot line, but that dialogue was incomprehensible. The important thing to note is that the two of them have reached some sort of understanding. Did you see her ducking? Like, she didn't even attempt to walk away or something. And what's the deal with them advertising together? Is this like a commercial break or something? Or are they like forced to work together? A cue card, really? You're getting it in the frame. Empty cans. She actually has to shoot it. I know you've probably lost all interest in the story by now, but here's an interesting development. Mikuru and Itsuki have started living together. Why? Well, now this is like one of those cute young housewives shows. And it Yo! Hey! hey. Were about. Easy. Are they trying to spice up the story? Are they playing Uno? The plot and throwing all of those moe situations at us? Oh, that's cute. And who the heck is that supposed yeah, to be? Yeah, who is this? Is she Itsuki's little sister? And wasn't that cat sitting on Yuki's shoulder a couple of scenes ago? Yeah, the cat was... Now Yuki tries a different... On her shoulder. And it looks like she's transferred into Itsuki's high school. Yuki attempts to ensnare Itsuki by using her sex appeal. Ins... And what? I guess I'd have to say that all's fair in love and war, right? This is a literal war right here. What, it's for the enslavement of Eventually, someone's species or something? Transfers into the same high school. You might be thinking, if her job is to protect him, why didn't she infiltrate his school earlier? But you're asking the wrong guy. Yuki and Mikuru yeah, you're kind of no help, now turn into help. A heated romantic comedy. Or rather, nothing more than a love triangle. This is like when Archie or something, season, if like, of some sort. it took we an extreme to angle. Where they do the whole realizing your true nature thing and the two of them are now back to pretending to be the battle waitress and the alien magician engaging in really lame fight scenes as for what's going to happen next even she I has to hold her don't know the answer it's a fight to the death that completely lacks any sense of excitement can we play on the slide now that's probably what those kids are thinking this schizophrenic story schizophrenic <laughs> As if it were written by a drunk child. Drunk child, wow. I'm assuming the director of this film felt that they needed to end things quickly, and it didn't really matter how they did it. So, or did your doctor tell you you've got athlete's foot? Athlete's Is she still under the spell or what? You can see her almost breaking character. I know I'm nitpicking here, but I don't see how Mikuru and Surya know each other. Sure, you could say that they met after Mikuru transferred to the high school, but then how does that explain the scene where Okay, it's Surya not that funny. The lake? That happened before Mikuru started going to the yeah, school. Yeah, just get her out of the frame. A huge error in continuity, and if you don't know what to do next, slowly pan the camera and shoot the scene. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, we've reached the climax of the film, finally. I love these backgrounds, by the way. It's like... So cool. I am afraid that you and I do not have very much time left anymore. We must resolve our conflict before our lunch break is over. Our lunch break is over. something we both agree on. However, I'm positive that Itsuki will say that he's gonna choose me. I, um, I just know that he's gonna pick me. That is unfortunate for you because I do not intend to acknowledge his free will at all. 
At last, his hidden powers will all be mine. If she wants him so badly, why doesn't she just go just and get him? Just get him. Am I the only yeah. one thinking this? I won't let you do it. That is the reason why I have come here all the way from the future. <laughs> Continues on the roof, and it looks that one of the teachers who didn't authorize this or something. Yuki unleashes her death blow upon the helpless Mikuru. I know the special effects here are weak, but there's really no other way to make this thing more thrilling. So please use your imagination to embellish. I'm using my imagination, but I still can't make sense of it. And when did he get here? Are you all right? That's enough, Yuki. Stop this at once. Stop talking and get on hey, with it. Me the only thing Stop. you have to do Don't is take talk. over his mind and then we're done here. It's not like you haven't done something like that before, so just wave your little stick at him and... What? I am also the cat talks? Place. Wait. Take this, Itsuki Koizumi. I will now proceed to take control of your thoughts and actions. Can the cat actually talk in real life or something, or was that... Mm -hmm. I'm... Curses. Was that glow special effects too? What is going on? I feel like by some strange circumstance, these kids actually have superpowers or something. And Yuki, the alien witch, was transported to the far reaches of the universe. What was that supposed to be? Was that literally just... Oh. It's probably just a coincidence. Now we're in HD? Except for the commercials. Shop at Omori Electronics and Yamasute Model Shop for... This had to have been a giant advertisement or something like Harold and Kumar or, or something. Like, was a big advertisement for White Castle. This story is a work of fiction. <laughs> <laughs> they can't even believe it. Why do I have to say all this stuff anyway? I mean, it's pretty obvious. Okay, that's our girl. <laughs> the director. Yes, she is. It's so good the theater will be packed for every screening during the arts festival. Maybe we should charge admission to see the film. Oh, I should touch base with the film club. Not I only think are I'm going to skip the festival concert, today and take a nap somewhere. Right, what the hell? Okay, that's the melancholy of Haruhi Suzumi, I guess. As far as pilot episodes go, that was pretty confused, but like, I mean... I guess it did its job. It did give me a sense on what the characters are going to be like, I guess. They were kind of playing other characters or something. It'd be cool if, like, the rest of the series basically... If it, it showed us the making of this short or something like that. But I'm still wondering what the deal was with that, that cat talking. If, like, that seemed a little bit too expensive for, like, simple special effects from it film student project or something. Next episode, The Melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya, Part 1. Watch it. <laughs> Watch it. Okay. Tonally, this is a lot more comedic than what I remember the movie being, at least what little memory I've, I have of it anyway. Like, this was, it, it's literally what you, what you perceive it to be. It was literally just a, a, a project made by a bunch of students in high school. This is literally something like I would have made in high school when I was doing film classes there. It seems weird to me that they would have that they would have chosen those specific roles for those characters, like um the titular character, I guess, for this episode, Asahina, Mikuru Asahina. Like, she was basically dressed up in uh 
these these bunny girl costumes, these waitresses or whatever, and it feels like at least the character who who she is in real life in the context of the universe, she probably wouldn't ordinarily wear stuff like that. So I'm wondering if that was like kind of taken based off on who Asahina is as a person. And Nagato or Yuki, whatever her name is, she was dressed up in full witch gear or something like that. I don't know if she's obsessed with magic or something like that, or if she actually is magic or something like that. Koizumi was pretty boring throughout the entire thing. I mean, I get it. He probably didn't want to be there or something like that. So he probably just gave the driest delivery of dialogue that he could possibly give. But like, he probably just seems to be like an ordinary guy or something like that. Except for that. Um, let me go back and see. Yeah, right here, this weird beam that's coming from him, and it basically blasts uh, Nagato off, uh, uh, Team Rocket style, basically. I'm wondering if that was actually real or something like that, or if it was legitimately just special effects, because if so, like, wouldn't they want that to be, like, a secret or something like that? Especially from the director behind this whole thing, Haruhi Suzumiya. Wouldn't she... Wouldn't they want her to not know about that kind of stuff or something like that? I, I, I really don't know. A pilot like this achieved its job at um, giving me, like, a general outline of this world and of how these characters are going to be interacting with one another, but it really left a lot to be desired, like... I genuinely know, want to know what the plot is going to be from this point forward, leading up to um, the movie when I rewatch that eventually. But I don't know. I'm feeling a little bit iffy about this. But my my buddy said I'd be into something like this, and so I owe it to him to at least give this a shot in the future. Honestly, I think the narrator was the most hilarious part of all this. Like, um, I don't know if he had a general script. To to go off of, but he was basically talking to us, the audience, like, conferring what kind of feelings, what confused feelings we were having over this, and he was basically putting that into words. Like, he was questioning the logic of some panning shots and how characters were there and how they weren't there seconds afterwards. I like kind of dry humor like that, that, that comes with, um, with, uh, kind of anti-sitcom shows, like It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia and other stuff like that, that really pokes fun at some outlandish things that happen in um in anime like this overall good first episode i can't wait to watch more of it i can't wait to watch more of it with you guys like i said before i'm gonna have an outline of what's gonna be coming on the channel in the future in a basic uh channel update video that i'll be posting later on this week so you'll definitely get more updates on this harhi suzumiya and um my other my other reaction video that I made a while ago, I basically reacted to the first four episodes of Adventure Time, so you're going to be getting an update on that as well, and basically other things that are going to be uh, taking place around here. I really hope you guys enjoy that, though. Let me know how the formatting for this was, how the length of this was. Like, I don't want to make these like too long to digest or ingest or whatever you want to call it. I want these to be kind of decently quick. Thanks a lot for sticking around. Happy New Year, guys. I'll see you next time. See you later.